What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to share with you how I edit my videos. Like, share, subscribe if you find this video useful. Social media has become very popular within today's society. Every day millions of people watch and engage in the content that people create for the internet. Video editing is a skill set that helps produce seamless, entertaining, and informative videos for any and all platforms. It assists the creator by enhancing the original content to better connect and resonate with their viewers. There are several different video editing softwares to choose from to create content. My choice is Wondershare Filmora, however I am not sponsored by them. When you first open up Wondershare Filmora, you need to choose an aspect ratio that suits your project. And then of course, start a new project. Once you have started a new project, you're going to be coming to this screen right here. At the top here, you have a toolbar that has various things that you can use for your videos. The first option is media, which would be your own files that you would import from your computer into the program to use to make a video. The next tab is stock media, which provides you with pictures and videos of different things you may need in your video. The next tab is stock audio, which you can download sounds uh, or music to put into your video. The next one is titles to where you can put text into your videos. And the next one is the transitions that help you go seamlessly from one scene to the next. The next tab is effects where you can add certain effects to your scene. The next tab is stickers, which you can download different types of stickers that you can put into your video as well. And then of course you have pre-made templates that is available to use. The first thing that I do when I'm making a video is of course I make sure my aspect ratio is correct for my project. In this case is 16 by nine widescreen. And so the first thing that I do is I import all of the video clips and audio clips and whatever I want to put into my video that I have to use that I don't need stock media for. So let's import all the clips that I need. So the video that I'm making in this video that I'm using as an example was the video that I had made last week, which was a price breakdown of how much it costs to build my box truck RV conversion. So after all of my media that I have to use is imported into Filmora, the first thing that I do is I put my intro at the beginning of the timeline. The next thing I do is take my voiceover clip and put it into my timeline. And another thing that I do sometimes, especially when I actually record a video of myself talking to the camera is I'll detach the audio from the video. Therefore, it will put the audio on a separate track than the video. And the purpose for this is so that I can still keep my audio, but I can clip out the video sections that I want to clip out and I can remove them and put another video clip in its place and still retain the audio. You can also drag and drop a media file on the timeline above the section where you want to cover up. But I like to do it this way just to make it seem more smooth, especially when using transitions, which we'll use later in the video. A lot of times, one of the first things I'll do after I drop this media file into the timeline is I'll adjust and crop the picture to fit the screen a little bit better where I have to zoom it in or zoom it out or move it left to right. Then utilizing this line marker here, I go through the entire clip and I cut out all of the dead spaces or the bloopers or anything that I don't want in my video. And it's real simple to do. All you have to do is line up this marker and press on the scissor logo and it'll cut that scene. Then you can move it down a little bit and do the same thing. And then you can delete the piece that you wanted to delete. So I'm going to go ahead and delete out everything that I don't want in my video.
once you have everything cut out of the video that you don't want in your video, the next thing that I did was mess with my green screen. There's a few ways of doing this. You can either cut yourself out and remove the background completely and put a different background behind you, or you can just change the color of the background to a different color, and that's what I did. After removing the background or changing the color, or even leaving it as it is, next thing I do is I play through the video until I reach a part where I want to switch the video file for a different one. In this case, I'm removing myself and I'm replacing it with drone footage of the box. And as you can see, I fit the drone footage of the box right within the timeline between my speaking point. And so I'll go through most of the video or even the entire video and I'll swap out video files on the timeline for a different one, depending on what I'm talking about at the time. And this to me makes the video more interesting. So you're not looking at the same thing the entire time. The scene is changing depending upon what you're talking about to help the viewer understand what you're talking about by also being able to see it. In certain instances where the aspect ratio is not right on some of the media, like for example, in a few of these clips here, where it doesn't exactly fit within the screen correctly, I double it up and then I'll take the one that's behind and blur it out and stretch it out throughout the entire screen and then keep the original format centered. And you always wanna make sure that you render your video to be able to play it back smoother. And so once I get most or all of the video replaced with other clips that I wanna use, I go back to the beginning of the video and then I'll input my text. Any text that I wanna use, I'll use text boxes. And if I have to duplicate it, I'll duplicate it. And that's easy you could just copy and paste and i go into the text option on the toolbar on the top and i'll look for a text that i want to use and then i'll customize it to how i want it to look in the video and then of course resize it and make it fit just right and then you can make it however big or small you want it on the timeline so in this part right here i'm actually putting down a list of certain things and how I have to do that is I have to stack these text boxes on top of each other, but I have to stagger the beginning so they pop up at different times within the video. So for example, I'll have solar electric pop up when I say solar electric, and then a few seconds later, when I say hot running water, I'll have that text box pop up. If you're utilizing the same text and color and settings, you can copy and paste these text boxes and it will make editing your video so much easier. So I'll do these text boxes throughout most or all of the video. In this case, I think I did most of the video and then I went back to the beginning and then I added music to my video because I like to put music into my videos as background music at a lower volume just to fill up any dead space that there might be. Plus I feel that it makes the video more engaging. So in this case, I used one song from beginning to end and I, I put the volume down to I believe negative 28 decibels I think you can go to like negative 56 and I think as high as positive 12 decibels but because I want to use it as background music I have it turned down significantly to where you can just barely hear it I have the music playing consistently from beginning to end in this video but in other videos I often like to follow the beat of the song with how the video clips change. And that makes it more seamless in itself. So right when a certain beat starts is when you start your video clip. And once that beat ends and then restarts is when you'll change your video clip to, to the next one. But like I said, in this case, we're only using music for background noise. I'm keeping it consistent throughout the entire video. And then after the music, what I like to do is I'll go and I'll start from the beginning and I'll work on my transitions. I like to use transitions because it helps the video clips go from one to another a lot more smoothly. There's many to choose from. I only use a few different types. For this video, I'm only using one for all of the clips just to make them all the same. I don't use anything too crazy most of the time. I don't want it to look too cheesy. I want it to look pretty decent. And you could do the same thing with transitions as you do with the text boxes. Once you size your transitions 
to however long you want them to be, you can highlight every clip that you want the transition to be on and paste them on those clips. So in this part of the video, I was doing a recap of everything that I did to the van and how much it cost. I wanted the text to show up on the screen as I was talking about it. So the cost to build an RV conversion would be the title of this list. So that would be the first thing to pop up. And each time I said a category or the price is when I had another text box lined up staggered from the previous one to pop up on the screen as I was saying it. For example, the van costs about $4,000. The maintenance costs about $2,000 and so on and so forth. And then of course, after you've made a whole pyramid of about, I don't know, 16, 17 text boxes stacked up on top of each other, you'll have your list on your screen and when you play it back, it'll pop up category, price, category, price, category, price. And then at the end of each clip, I'll put a transition so that they all fade out at the same time before going into the next video clip. And then one of the last things that I'll do is I'll go into the stickers and I'll put a couple stickers in my video such as leave a comment or I'll put a subscribe sticker down there animated of course to where it'll click on the subscribe and then the like and then the notification bell and then after I get done with doing all of that the video is pretty much done I'll go back and uh, I'll render the video first just to make sure it plays back smoothly. And I'll watch the entire video from beginning to end just to make sure everything is how I want it to be. Whether it's the text boxes, the transitions, or the video itself, or the audio, if it's too high or low, I could adjust everything and anything. It's basically like proofing it just to make sure that everything's good before I make it into a video. Once everything is to my liking, then I go and click on export and then export it into a video. Always make sure that you save your project as you go along. There's nothing worse than working hard just for it to be erased. And then when your video is done, this is what your timeline will look like, or similar to that. It depends on how basic or complex you need or want your video to be. I feel like I'm pretty decent with video editing. I'm not the greatest, but I'm not the worst either. There is a lot of tools that Filmora offers that you can use but I don't really use it because I don't understand them all just yet, but I'm working on it and I'm trying new things almost every video that I make just to try to better myself and to create better content for all of you. Well, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think. What did you like? What did you not like? What could I do differently? Thanks for all the love and support, and see you next time. Going for a car ride.